Hi everyone, so hopefully this will clear up. I'm just going to edit this obviously at the end, but um, volume's got a little kind of low when I'm recording it. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to turn this off. I the dehumidifier here. I think that'll pick up things. So we'll see. Okay. So, a little full from today's session. Well, well today's but I had, I had lunch, <laughs> and I'm a little full today. So, today I wanted to talk about, um, what was it? Oh yeah, preservation of languages. So, uh, one of the things I see often is when, or preserving language, it's, a lot of it is just like out of fear, I find. It's just like, um, I mean, I understand where that comes from. So, you know, you want to just preserve a language. So you do things like you have all these so-called like classes or you want to you know promote the language and all that stuff. But one thing I noticed that there, some people are, well, some many organizations or many groups are forgetting is that language preservation has nothing to do with language but communication. I always tell this to people, language is not language, it's for communication. So one of the things I learned about language acquisition, yes, as a, ther as a term or even as a methodology, to me that doesn't matter. The point is when we create new so-called native speakers, that grows the language itself, the number of speakers, right? But it's more than just number of speakers. It's um, because you know when you acquire language, for those people who've done acquisition, or rather have had acquisitional experiences, it's the same thing as when you do other skills, like when you uh, when you acquire skills like uh, not do other skills when you acquire other skills like uh, what is it like anything hands on, sports, cooking, uh, driving. Uh, dancing, I don't know, even music, right? You acquire through the body first because what? 80% of communication is body language. It's all about that subconscious part of the brain. I tell people this all the time. Um, of course, you know, there's like people out there like, oh, no, 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 this is acquisition is for children, no, 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 all these things. Like, I heard so many of it. And it doesn't work that way because. Acquisition is actually not about the methodology or the methods or whatever technique. It's about being natural. So, in my experience, it's always been about this um, process that is just so innate and so like in there. And you just have to really trust it. And one of the things I always tell people is like, again, going back to being childlike. In my last video, I talked about, and the last thing I said, do what children do. Te children are my teachers. And one of the things when it comes to language preservation, if we're talking about just that, is you need more speakers. But a lot of times people think language preservation is usually tied directly to the culture, as in like skin color or like your background or something like that. It's kind of more, it's kind of like a, maybe a bit like subconscious or like unconscious or like sort of a limiting belief that, you know, because I'm coming from uh, a culture in Canada where you have many people, actually the, well, the new world countries, like North American countries, South American, there are many people, who are, you know, who speak Spanish, who speak Portuguese, who speak English, who speak French, that are not you know, white, <laughs> you know, so why does it have to be anything else but the, you know, if you want to preserve something, don't, don't think about preservation, think about growing rather than, you know, closing in, don't hold things like, let it out. Something I'm still learning myself, you know, especially after the pandemic and, you know, there's still fears, I still have my fears, you know, don't get me wrong, it's just, it's there. But it's a step-by-step -step process, just like in nature, you know, everything is gradual, right? So language preservation has a lot to do with acquiring 
acquisition, but rather like that embodying of the like I'll explain more about that another time, but it's really the through that subconscious process how it links to culture. Without culture, you don't have language. But what's behind culture? I tell this to people all the time. What is culture? Well, it's behavior, body language, right? So I read somewhere that the subconscious, the lizard part of the brain, the three part of the brain, the lizard, mammalian, and the human or the neocortex, the lizard brain is the one that's the oldest, evolutionarily speaking. It's so old that it's just like so automatic. This is why when you do things like at the very beginning, especially at the very beginning, when you teach language to like, you actually teach it, like I mean like, you know, you into grammar and all that stuff, you teach them how to read and all that stuff. That is comes from that fear that it's like you have to be perfect today. Well, a sapling doesn't become a tree overnight. Not even like in a few months, not even like, well maybe a few months, depending on the species or whatever. Doesn't matter. The point is, it's gradual. It's a process. But because it's so it's so because it's so slow that time that it takes you that it's kind of like perfection in every lingo every single step. You know, as humans we love to label things. We love to put things in categories and you know levels and all that stuff and grading systems and all that stuff. It doesn't work that way. You cannot quantify growth. You cannot quantify evolution. It continues to grow. You can put labels on it, you can sort of measure it, sure. But is that really the point? Like, if you really think about it. Right? So, I'm kind of impassioned about this because it's like, I see this all the time. People wonder, oh, I don't have this, I don't have, this. I can't speak fluently. I don't. Well, fluency is what? Fluency is automatic, right? So where is it automatic in the brain? Down here. Down here. How do we get there? Do we really force information in? Do we memorize? Do we do grammar? Do we translate? Do we correct ourselves? Do we like, okay? Uh, uh, that's up here. So, I mean, I don't have to prove anything because that's from my experience. Like, I studied German and Danish and all these languages for about 10 years or more. Nothing, nothing happened. I had no confidence whatsoever. I couldn't speak it properly. Um, now, the past two years or so, fluency has been growing, you know, albeit like slowly, but it's there, you know, and you talk to people who um, have all these like methods and people who really are fluent, most likely will tell you that they had more of the experience of like growth. If they look back and tracked it or measured it, they would see it through acquisitional process meaning subconscious not knowing that you're learning right so it's really about that stuff so anyways it's tied directly to language preservation because the more speakers you have that acquire the culture behind the language or therefore the body language you know saying things simple things like saying like what versus what or what body language it's not about the word it's not about the technique it's not about the pronunciation is about that. But I mean, at the same time, you know, when you acquire, you get everything. You get, you absorb the grammar, not, you know, it's like being like talking to a friend. You don't analyze a friend and you break them down and you cut them up into pieces, break them down, okay? <laughs> you and you accept them for who they are, the as a whole. Same thing with a car. Are you gonna learn how to drive a car by knowing every single part of the car? No, you get in there and you drive, you drive. Okay, you learn through the process, step by step. You learn on the way, learning by doing. So, for another time, but language preservation, I find this all the time. It's like, how do you preserve language? How do you preserve language? Oh, all these things, their efforts they're making, it's all very robotic. It's all very about like methods and all those things. It's like, it's okay to have methods, but it's like they're forgetting the real essence behind it, which is natural. Natural like intention, natural whatever nature. Okay, the point is, we live in the world of inform you know, information age today, but it's like I find it's like too much information. 
We don't need all those information. So again, I'm impassioned about this. I'm not trying to point fingers. It's just, um, yeah, it's, it can be frustrating. So, I mean, like, I'm just frustrated myself because, like, uh, you know, I do it myself. Um, again, something else another time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so language preservation comes directly from being more natural. Like, look at the oral st traditions. They passed it on. That's where they were able to pass it on. Writing can come later. Reading can come later. Because that came later. All th Look at every civilization. Any writing system you have. It came later. So that's not natural. Actually. Symbols. Mathematical symbols. Numbers. Letters. Those are not actually natural to us. At least not today. Maybe in, I don't know, a million years or something like that. But what's more natural is step through the body for the five senses especially pleasure because i tell people all the time it's connected directly pleasure is connected to that subconscious when you're having fun you just forget time flies you just remember right so i always tell another thing i tell other my, my, my students is when you're doing things subconsciously you have you know you understand you interpret or it's able to problem solve right and you remember, like real remembering. And you get fluency, meaning automaticity. Like just being, just like that. Anyways, hope that was, um, also testing out my refurbished um, GoPro uh, and seeing how it works here. But um, hopefully this will work. Um, if not, I'll make another video, no problem. Life's life. Okay, thanks for watching. Thanks for spending your time watching me. Uh, all this stuff, I just wanted to share this. I'll see you guys later, and bye.